We are in the midst of a global climate emergency. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, recently warned that, quote, the world has never seen a threat to human rights of this scope. You know, when we have a fire or a medical emergency, our response is immediate, measured in minutes. We deploy courage and the resources required to put out fires, rescue people, and save lives. And yet our response to the global climate emergency has been sluggish, slow, and ineffective. In 1992, when nations negotiated the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the share of the world's total energy use that came from fossil fuels was 81%. 27 years later, the share of the world's energy use that comes from fossil fuels is precisely the same, 81%. Overall, global greenhouse gas emissions have risen over 60% since 1992. The world's best and brightest scientists on climate change, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, concluded that limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees would require, quote, rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. And our children in the millions are urging us as adults, as political leaders, as business people, to take climate change much more seriously, to take urgent action, to act now. We are already witnessing across the world the impacts of climate change, the increased frequency, severity, and duration of extreme storms, water shortages, droughts, heat waves, wildfire, sea level rise, desertification and destruction of ecosystems such as coral reefs as well as the spread of vector-borne and waterborne diseases. There are coastal communities from the South Pacific to Northern North America that are going to have to be relocated. Through these impacts, climate change is clearly affecting human rights across the world and these adverse impacts fall disproportionately upon vulnerable populations. There are four main categories of actions that must be taken in order to address and protect human rights from climate change. Number one, addressing society's addiction to fossil fuels. Number two, accelerating other mitigation actions. Number three, protecting vulnerable people from climate impacts. And number four, providing unprecedented levels of financial support to least developed countries and small island developing states. Of course, states have obligations to respect, protect, and fulfill human rights in the context of climate change. And five UN treaty bodies issued a statement concluding that, quote, failure to take measures to prevent foreseeable human rights harm caused by climate change or to regulate activities contributing to such harm could constitute a violation of states' human rights obligations. Unless we take rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented actions to reduce emissions, global temperatures will continue to rise and the impact on human rights in the future will be far worse. Clearly, a dramatic change of direction is required and I believe that human rights must be at the heart of all climate action. A rights-based approach to climate change will serve as a catalyst for accelerated action to achieve a healthy and sustainable future where forests are flourishing, where all energy and transportation is provided by zero emission sources, oceans are healthy, food is sustainably produced, and all people live happy, fulfilling, dignified lives.